So you need to SSH into GitHub. Maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe you need some help generating those GitHub SSH keys. Maybe you just need to be shown how to set up those SSH keys in GitHub. Or maybe you hit that pesky permission denied public key error and you, you'd like me to show you how to get around it. Well, don't worry. Whatever the situation is, I'm going to get you connecting to GitHub over SSH in no time. And when you do connect to GitHub over SSH, I've got two requests. One, when you speak about me, say nice things. And two, check out my Git and GitHub tutorial that I recently published on YouTube. It's two hours long. It's going to make you very, very, very dangerous when it comes to these Git and GitHub tools. Now, working with SSH. If you want to SSH into GitHub, the first thing you need is a pair of SSH keys. And those SSH keys can be found under your home directory on Windows or even Ubuntu. Um, I'm logged in as a user named owner on my Windows machine here. And you can see in that owner directory, I do not have a folder called .ssh. The .ssh folder is where Git looks for your public and private keys to do that handshake with GitHub on the server. Um, and if you don't have that .ssh folder, well, you don't have SSH keys on your machine. You're going to need to generate them. So step one, if you want to SSH into GitHub, is generating those SSH keys. So how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is open up PowerShell. Now, I will say that uh, you can run this exact same command inside terminal on Linux Ubuntu. And the command is this. It's, hey, please, um, would you please generate an SSH key for me? SSH-keygen. There's one option that you'll want to use. I always like to use the URSA keys, also affectionately known as RSA keys. Um, and then it's always good to put a little comment in there. I always like to throw in my Twitter handle at Cameron MCNZ, just to remind everybody to go follow me on Twitter and say hello, maybe even share this tutorial. But uh, uh, sometimes you put your email address in there's just something that identifies you inside the public key that gets created. But that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, I'm going to click the enter button here. And I'm going to get asked a couple of questions first. So it's going to say, okay, we're going to generate these keys. Um, where do you want to save them? Notice that the folder here is, as I mentioned before, the user's home directory dot SSH. Don't get funny here. Don't overthink this and say, you know, there's a better place for these SSH keys. That is where Git is going to go hunting for your private key to do the handshake when the server provides the public key. So don't mess around there. I'm just going to click enter and accept the defaults. Do you want to secure this key? I'm not going to. You can if you want to, but if somebody gains access to my machine, I've probably got bigger issues. So I'm just going to click enter there twice and boom, notice what happened in that home directory of mine. There's a new folder in there. It's called .ssh, and that wasn't there before. And that's where my public and private keys are stored. So I'm going to go in those in a second. But first, I'm just going to observe and enjoy this beautiful piece of Jackson Pollock art that has been displayed to me. Looks good. Thank you very much. Makes my day just to see those things. Okay, the .ssh folder. You'll notice that we've got two files in here. One file is your public key. The other file is your private key. You put your public key up on GitHub. You keep your private key private. Um, and then when you do SSH, that public key gets compared to the private key. And if everything matches, well, then your clones, your fetches, your pushes, your pulls, they'll all go swimmingly. But I do need to take that public key and move it up to GitHub. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open this up with my favorite text editor called Notepad++. And all of a sudden it says, hey, here is that public key. That's the one you generated. How do I know that's the one that I generated? Oh, look at that. My Twitter handle is in there. I don't think that's anybody else's public SSH key. So open that up. 
take a look at the key, copy that key because you need to get that up to GitHub. So I'm going to open up my GitHub account. Here I am right there over on GitHub. That's my face. And uh, I'm going to go into the settings here. So I click on my uh, profile picture. And then I'm going to come down here to settings. Click on settings. And then over on that left hand side, you'll see a, a friendly little link for SSH and GPG keys. And that's exactly where we want to go. And it says, hey, do you have any SSH keys? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. So it's okay, well, add your new SSH key here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I will. And so I paste the key in here and I'll do the GitHub SSH example tutorial. I know I guess it looks good as the name title of the key really doesn't matter. Just add that SSH key. Okay, so now you've got your SSH key, your public key up on GitHub, and you've got your private SSH key on your local machine. Now you should be able to do a handshake and clone over SSL, SSH between your local machine and the server. So let's do that next. I'm going to go back to the landing page of my repository. This one's called Learn Git Fast, just in case you were looking for it. Um, once I'm here, I'm going to click on that Repositories tab, and I've got a repository called Salmon. I was actually doing a, a little tutorial on upstream branches in Git. Nothing goes upstream like a Salmon does. So I'm going to click on that project right there, and there's this beautiful green button and this beautiful green button has a couple of links that will uniquely identify this repository one of them is an https link but https is for losers we want to use ssh here so i click on that ssh link and then i click on that copy to copy the ssh url is that called an ssh url looks like a url um, so i copy that and now I can go onto my local machine and clone this repository. So let's head over here, mosey on into this folder called repos. I'm going to right click here and select open git bash here. Now, if you don't have an open git bash here now, uh, you may not have git installed. So you do have to have git installed in order to uh, do a clone to the server. I've actually got some how to install git tutorials up on my YouTube channel. Um, but all I have to do now is say git, let's clone, paste in that SSH URL, and I'm going to click enter. I'm going to keep my eye on the prize over on the right hand side to, to watch the, the salmon folder get created. but I don't know, I might be challenged here. Let's see what happens the first time we try to SSH into GitHub. So it says, oh, look at this. The authenticity of host GitHub can't be established. Hmm, looks like some shady website, right? Uh, it's a Microsoft website, isn't it? Well, if that doesn't mean it's shady, I don't know what is. Um, of course we trust them. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? You to type in yes. Don't click enter. You got to type in yes. I trust Microsoft and GitHub with all of my data. So I click yes. Notice that folder has been created on the right hand side. Salmon is over there. It says we've permanently added GitHub to the list of known hosts and boom, all of a sudden I have cloned down to my local file system. And if you don't believe me, I can move over into this Salmon folder and you can see Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Devo, and that matches the files over there on my server. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Devo. Boom, I have, connect, I have successfully connected to GitHub using SSH and done an SSH clone from GitHub as well. So things are going swimmingly. By the way, I mentioned that uh, Microsoft owns GitHub. They bought them for $9 billion. So if you ever see a business opportunity where you can take free open, soft, open source software, put it in the cloud and charge people for it, that's a good business model. Okay, so now I've cloned from GitHub using SSH. Uh, there's a couple of other things that uh, I need to do as well, just to prove that SSH is working. I want to do maybe a, a pull, maybe a fetch, maybe a push as well. So the way that Git and GitHub works, the, the whole yin-yang of Git is this. 
So first, when you work with Git, you'll have a remote repository from which you'll clone. And that brings down the repository from the server onto your local file system. After you do a clone, you then add files and then you add them to the staging index. You do a git add. That stages the files, tells git which files you want to include in the next commit, and then you do a git commit. And then after that, git commit has taken a snapshot of the state of your files. You can move that up to GitHub by doing a push. You can actually do that all in one step with a git commit dash a command and then a push, but you get the idea. Um, if people make changes up to the server and you want to bring those changes down locally, then you pull. So the first time you clone, the second time you pull, and every subsequent time you pull from the server. And optionally, if uh, instead of doing a pull, you want to do a fetch and then a merge, if that suits your fancy, you can do that as well. But why don't we do that? Why don't we prove that out and just see how this works here? So I'm going to go onto my local file system. I'm going to create a new text document. I'm going to call it echo.txt. So a new file has been created. I'll say open git bash here. I'll type in git status and it says to me, hey, there's an untracked file here, a file that hasn't been added to git staging index. And why don't I stage it then? So I'll say git add echo.txt. And now that stages the file so that when I do a commit, it'll be included in the next commit. I can go git status again. And it says, OK, there's one change to be committed. If you do a commit, that new file is echo.txt. I do what I'm told. I'm not afraid of commitment, despite what my friends might say. I'm going to do a commit right here. And I'll say git commit dash m for a git commit message and I'll say my ssh github example commit. <laughs> it's a long commit, but I do my commit. And now I've created a git commit history on my local file system, but it's not shared with the server. So if you come over here and you take a look at what's on the server, even if I click refresh, well, you'll notice that I've got devo up on the server is the last file that was created there, but I've got echo on my local file system. I want to move echo to the server. That means doing an SSH push. And there's nothing special about an SSH push. You just say git push. And since SSH and GitHub has already been configured, it does the push to the server. And I come back here and I can see that, hey, where it's not, I'm just joking, do a refresh and there you go, boom. Echo is now up on the server. So initially we do a clone, um, then you add files, edit files, commit them, and do a push to the server. There's also the opposite, right? There's also the fact that maybe somebody can add a file on the server, maybe one of your coworkers, one of your code developers pushes a file to the server, and you might want that. So let's simulate that just by creating a new file here. And so we've got echo, what did I call it? Create it fred.txt. Hello, Fred. Commit those changes on the server. And now I'm in this crazy situation where the server actually has more files than my client machine, right? I've got Fred over there in the server. I don't have Fred on the client. So how do you do that? Well, once again, you can say open git bash here. I want those files on my local file system. So I say git pull. And when I click pull, keep your eye on the prize. Boom, fred.txt comes down. So initially I did a SSH clone, then I do an SSH push, now I've done an SSH pull. By the way, there's also something called a fetch, which uh, some people often get uh, confused on. Um, when you do a pull, it actually takes the files from the server and puts them right on your local file system. So you saw Fred go right to the file system there. Sometimes you might be working on files. Sometimes you might just want to pull from the server and, and find out information about what's happening on the server. Like, are there more commits or, or do you have more commits than the server? Um, you know, is, the, is your head certain number of commits ahead or behind? Um, and, but you don't actually want to overwrite the files in your file system. And you can do that with a fetch. So I'm just going to show you that here. Uh, may as well do an SSH fetch here. I'm going to add a new file to the server. So add file. What happens after F in the golf.txt? I love golf. Commit those changes. 
So right now you can see that up on the server, we've got uh, golf. Where's golf? How come I don't have golf there? A little refresh, we got golf there, but I don't have that on the client side. Um, so the server is has been updated. Now, right now, if I do a git status command, Right now it says that your branch is up to date with origin main. Origin main is the server. But in fact, it's not up to date, right? We both know that the server's got an extra commit on it. So if you want to find out what's going on with the server, um, but not necessarily update the files that you're working on, you can always do a git fetch. And as I do a git fetch over SSH to GitHub in this case, uh, what will happen is we'll get updated about the remote server, about Git, updated about GitHub, but the changes won't come down onto my file system. So notice I don't have golf on my file system, but if uh, I do this, I say git status, it says your branch is behind origin main by one commit. So the server is one commit ahead of you. We're behind the server. So the fetch has brought information from the server down to my local machine, but not overwritten things. Now you can always say a git merge origin main, and that'll now force the changes that were pulled down from the main branch on GitHub origin right here, just means GitHub, um, click that, and boom, you can actually see golf.txt over there as we do the SSH fetch and then the, the merge back into the, the client system. So there you go. Now, I think that is pretty much all of the operations that you can do with SSH to GitHub. So I don't know. I hope that was elucidatory. Um, yeah, I think there you go. You know everything you need to know about SSH and GitHub. Now, by the way, uh, I don't think I introduced myself earlier. My name is Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at the serverside.com, and I have to be one of the world's uh, biggest Git advocates. And uh, over on the server side, we've got all sorts of great tutorials about Git, GitHub, DevOps, Java, Python, Agile, Scrum, you name it. So head over there, see what we're up to. Um, if you're interested in my personal antics, uh, you can always follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at CameronMCNZ. And you know, I'd really love to, to hear from you if you enjoyed this video and if it, it helped you out. So share the video and tag me on Twitter and say hello or find me on LinkedIn. Uh, as well. And one other thing I would suggest, um, I do have a newsletter. The link to the newsletter is in the description. We talk all about DevOps tools like Git and Jenkins and GitHub Actions and all of those things. Um, but uh, we also talk a little bit about what's going on in the software development industry. And you may not know, but there's a brand new programming language about to come out. It's called Mojo and it's poised to completely replace Python along with another, a number of other languages in the A AI and ML space. And if you don't get up to speed on this new Mojo programming language, you are seriously going to fall behind. So we're talking a lot about like that along with a lot of teaching and training videos about Mojo and the AI space. So as I said, please uh, take a look at the, the link to the newsletter and sign up and keep up to date on what's going on there. By the way, I do also have a couple of books. So I wrote the book Pickering is Springfield, all about the Simpsons and uh, also Hibernate Made Easy. And I'm also working with a young freelancer as well. You can see the book in the background, Darcy DeClute, Scrumptious on Twitter. And uh, she wrote the Scrum Master Certification Guide. A number of people have read that book and scored 100% on the Scrum Master Certification Exam. So if you are agile or you know somebody else that's uh, interested in Scrum Certification, uh, get them that book. And there you go. That's uh, about it. Um, the last thing I would say is that if you're watching this video on YouTube, um, you should subscribe on YouTube.